All right, we are here with the Tesla holiday update for 2021. It is awesome. It is jam packed with features and I am going to be revisiting my UI UX tour screen tour for the Tesla Model 3 and Model Y. I am in a Tesla Model Y performance 2021 and you're going to have a very similar experience in any Model 3 or Model Y. Model S's are a little bit different. X's are also a little bit different, um, but this should cover the majority. This video is also really intended for new Tesla folks, although if you are a current Tesla owner, maybe there'll be some cool tidbits in here that you didn't know as well. So sit back, enjoy, and let's Tesla buy. Starting on the left hand side of the screen, we can see the status of our car. If it's driving, well, this will change. We'll take a look at that here in a minute. But we can open up the trunk, we can lock or unlock the car, and we can open up the trunk as well as the charge port. So if we tap open trunk, it will actually animate and open the trunk for us. That's pretty cool. Same thing with the doors. You'll be able to see if any of the doors are open um, and see the status of those as well. Um, as a reminder, the frunk will open, but it simply pops the frunk and you would actually have to go outside and close it. So we won't do that. But you can lock the car as well. And an important piece to know is when the car is locked, you actually can't do any of those items as well. So if you are not having that happen, then you may need to unlock the car. Up top, you'll see that the, especially in this update, one of the things that has changed is the drive mode or the status of the car is up in the right hand, left hand corner here. A little bit smaller. I believe it's also a slightly different font than maybe we have seen in the other ones, especially when we see the speedometer and that sort of thing. Speedometer is going to appear up here as well as the speed limit in this corner, etc. when we're driving. We'll do a quick driving uh, piece after this. And then moving along the top, we have our current range. You can actually tap this to change between percentage and if you'd rather see the miles. I typically leave it in the percentage. I believe that's a bit more accurate. You can also tap on the battery to go right to the charging portion of the um, of the menu and see a little bit more details about charging. And we'll take a little bit more detail at that in a minute. And then keeping along the top, again, we have our status of our lock. We can lock from there as well. Um, we've got the time, the temperature, and because I have full self-driving beta, I do have this um, FSD report button there. So if you're not on the FSD program, you will not see that. And if you are curious about the FSD program, um, you essentially need to <coughs> enroll in it. We'll take a look at what that looks like. And then you have to hit a 100 safety score for a certain amount of time. And then after a while, it will let you in. Uh, this video is not about that, but you can definitely take a look at some of my previous videos that will have some more information. On the right hand side of the screen, obviously we have our map. So we get to see um, a really nice large view of our map. On top of that, we can see, we can change it to satellite view. We can change it to um, view our traffic as well and then we can hide and or show waypoints which is kind of interesting so uh, I believe that wasn't in the last version as well so I usually like to have traffic on but I don't care for the satellite I'd rather see the roads myself you also got to see a preview of what it looks like to get a text message so hey congrats Rachel you're famous you're on the video so um, that is the map on the right hand side we'll also be able to navigate tapping on things such as home work etc once those are set uh, you can do those you also have this lucky i don't believe this was a in the last one as well somebody can correct me if i'm wrong but hey looks like this is going to take us to waterfront park in leavenworth that's pretty interesting i bet you it kind of takes into consideration range and all that sort of thing and then of course we can tap the directions to get there Tapping the star will add that to our favorites in the navigation menu, which is pretty cool. We can call the place and we can also look up their website, which a lot of interesting, cool features just in the map. So if you ever are looking for a restaurant or need to call them, using the navigation or searching in the maps is actually a really good way to do that as well. As you can see, we've got 
traffic details. Leavenworth is always super busy, so um, that's actually a really good representation of what that looks like. If we tap on this guy here, it has our compass. It actually will just change the orientation. So now we've got true north up and which direction I'm facing, and then we tap it again, this will make our location facing up and adjust the map accordingly. So pretty straightforward. I don't believe tapping on this guy does anything. It does not. So um, it gives our approximate location and, and that's uh, about it. So very clean, very straightforward. Again, I'm in park, etc. So this is kind of what you'll see when you first enter the car. Okay, let's go along the bottom now real quick. And uh, there's a couple new things that we have noticed in this update. For one, the icons now are color, which at first I wasn't quite sure about, but it really does help with, at a glance, knowing what those are. So over here we have our main menu. We'll dive into that in a minute. We have our temperature, which is interesting. Before it was simply in the middle, made it a little bit challenging to access. And then if you split it, you would actually do what you kind of see here and show the temperature on either side. The nice thing is the passenger can now actually still adjust the temperature from their side. So that makes things quite handy. And if we take a look here, they can also access the defrost. We can actually now set the heater in here as well. Some folks have complained that this is no longer in the main navigation, um, but we do have this new uh, auto feature, which I think is pretty handy. And tapping on that will actually bring up the um, the controls and we'll take a look at that but the auto heat seater is a really good way to go and is also a new feature so that's a really cool update and if you are again you want to quickly access the seat heater or change it you can use voice controls to do that and that makes it really easy and the voice controls are awesome so I highly recommend so tapping into the the climate controls we have a uh, full system on off auto etc if we tap the auto it goes into manual we can adjust the vents we can toggle each of them individually if we just want to have the the foot going that's good as well uh, obviously adjusting our heat seater as well on the side and then we've got our defrost heated steering wheel air conditioning and then fan speed and so we can toggle all those. Another neat feature is we can actually schedule this. So if we want to have our car warmed up for us just before we go to work, we can set that up and we can make sure that our car is nice and warm or cold based on where you are at and your desired temperature. Pretty neat. Going along the right side here, we've got keep temperature. So this is handy if you plan on exiting the car and you want to have the car maintain its temperature. You're gonna to run to the store real quick, it's cold outside like it is today. You can have the car keep the current temperature for you even while you exit the, ve the vehicle. After you exit, generally, it will turn off the climate and um, will you would have to manually activate it from your phone, which is also quite handy. Um, so let's go ahead and toggle this back off. There is dog mode, very handy if you happen to have a furry friend and for from my knowledge the first time you won't have to worry about your um your pet actually um you know being too hot in the car it will actually keep the temperature and the other great thing and let's see if i can actually toggle it is it's in dog mode so if i open the door and i shut it and i think it still senses that i'm in here so that could be a problem but it will actually um display on the screen that uh, sentry mode is disabled so you won't have that and we'll talk about that in a minute but um, it will keep the temperature in the car for the pet and it will let anybody know on the screen it'll say it's currently in dog mode my owner will be back it's currently set to this temperature and essentially don't break my windows right so very cool and lastly we have camp mode and this is also so these are all very similar right but in camp mode it will actually allow you to um, again keep the the air conditioning on. I also believe that there is some mitigation of humidity in is in this mode as well. So the windows don't become all seamed up, etc. So a really neat feature there. And um, clearly you can fit a full bed in the back of this. Uh, and with that glass roof, you're going to have a fantastic view. I have not done camping yet in the car, but I would like to, and I think that will be a lot of fun. So those are the options here in the climate control 
Uh, I typically have an auto. The other kind of fun thing that is different about Teslas is you can actually modify the kind of flow of the air by tapping and dragging. So up, down, and etc. The challenging part with this is that, you know, this is only for the vents uh, in the front here along the dash. There isn't an option for that in the footwell or anywhere else. So kind of neat, but it, is, it does really um, help with being able to direct that airflow where it's most comfortable for you. Also in this version with the rear seat, um, we can actually turn on the rear fan, which is really good if your children are back there and they're not getting enough heat, etc. Um, that's something that we can actually make sure is on and they can feel. That was previously hidden, um, basically I felt like hidden over on the right hand side and I actually didn't find it until recently. So climate controls, very cool, um, pretty intuitive. And now uh, just real quick, we'll dive back into um, this menu and we can actually get split. And now the, we can have different temperatures on each side and easily reached by the person who wants the particular temperature. If we dive into the settings, again, it just brings up this here as well. So just another, another way to access the, um, the settings. We can toggle off the split and now they're the same. The kind of interesting thing with this menu, uh, if I'm gonna be honest, is it should just change the word to split or not instead of just having the highlight. I've noticed some of those um, things but just a small note there with that okay so now I'm gonna dive into this middle section this middle section is basically one of the biggest updates to the UI here we have three icons that we can set um, that we'll see uh, we have a choice of options we can set here but we can set these to our preferences whatever we wish to use these are going to be our recently used apps so this will change based on the app that you may have used before that is not on this side. So it won't repeat, you know, Spotify on the right hand side. So this is actually a really interesting and dynamic way to make sure things that you use on a regular basis is in reach. So taking a look at the apps that we have here, they're all similar to what we had before. And I think again, this is a lot cleaner interface and makes a lot more sense. And at a glance, you can tell what these items are. If we wish to change which goes in the drawer here, we can actually tap and hold and it actually then will show, okay, we can remove that and then we can click and drag and maybe I want the energy in here as well. And then of course we can change the order. So if you're obviously um, very similar to what you do on a smartphone for arranging those apps. And again, we can at this time we can only have three. Um, maybe that will change in the future. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but that is uh, one of the biggest new features, and I, I actually really like it. Um, some of the things in that were here by default, I would have loved to. I love to swap out. So um, I actually like the ability to get to the messages here, whereas previously that was a couple step process, or again a voice command, um, and then having the toy box uh, here is also pretty handy. So that is um, the main the main uh, app section here. Let's kind of dive real quick into some of these apps. And we'll just start up here on the right, on the left rather. I'll toggle that off. So our camera is literally just the cameras on the car. Um, really nice for being able to view those. We can actually uh, hide the side mirrors if we want, or we can actually pull those back up, or the side repeaters, if you will. So right and left, um, pretty neat. That can be handy and, and toggled while you are driving. Dash cam is going to have all your recorded footage from sentry mode and anything that you have manually set up to record. Uh, and then, of course, you can play through that. And then you can toggle between the cameras from that recording, which is actually really handy as well. The red dot will represent what was the time that was triggered. And you can actually you know, scrub up to that to see maybe what have triggered that particular event. All right, and then of course we can delete it. So that is, for the most part, all with the um, the camera. We can also see that we can sort these between sentry and dash cam, and uh, then of course any other recordings. So let's dive into energy. Energy is pretty much the same if I remember. I don't really remember seeing anything different here. We still have 
our kind of consumption based on a range of 30 miles on average and we can actually toggle these if we want and we can kind of see our consumption um, for the last 30 miles and then a projected range based on the current average driving trip is also um, something that you'll be able to see all of your um, trips this is different as well and was previously hidden in another uh, menu but is an interesting view when it finally populates all right and if we i would take a look at phone but again there are some personal things in there so just take my word for it it does have all of your contacts once your phone is synced and you'll be able to um, contact those people make phone calls etc see missed calls all that good stuff calendar is also similar synced to your phone um, and you can see your current events and actually I can go ahead and pull that up real quick um, we can see we can also toggle between any of these as well so these are basically the things that are uh, set up with your phone that will um, you can toggle between each of those so it's almost like a think of it as your connection to your phone and that's pretty handy and obviously if you have um, phone numbers or a, a place to go you can navigate to those as well if there if that is something that is available for you theater so this is a, a pretty straightforward we can view um, our different entertainment options this is a really fantastic thing for if you are charging you want to keep the kids busy etc um, and of course you can sign into your account for all of those and actually it wasn't until recently I was able to sign in to my own YouTube account so YouTube is now up and running at least if you want to sign in previously it was just a very much for me there was some sign in issues etc but that seems to have been sorted I can now log in and view um, my YouTube subscriptions uh, etc and videos the other kind of neat thing is you can actually uh, have a picture in picture mode which is pretty cool and if you haven't already please like and subscribe to this channel I try and post a lot of content and if you love this video please hit that thumbs up um, I rarely beg for those things and I'm not gonna beg obviously but um, it does help out and I appreciate all of my just over 100 subscribers now thank you guys so much as well you guys are awesome um, I have a lot of fun with this and I hope you guys enjoy it too the other kind of neat thing with um, while you're in a full screen mode is we can still access the brightness the volume the temperature of the car and then of course we can dismiss so pretty full feature um, for YouTube and uh, being able to take a look at any of those things that you would normally want to take a look at within your account so pretty neat okay let's exit YouTube and again TikTok is new with this particular version Disney Plus was added uh, not too long ago as well um, and so lots of great options there so we can access the arcade toy box and browser from this but I'm gonna go back to this menu as well and we'll tap on arcade just so we're being consistent and this is actually kind of a new view with some of the games which is kind of nice we have um, the scrolling view instead of a it used to be stacked so now we basically just scroll to see all the different games that we have available to us and newest one is Sonic the Hedgehog I've not actually played it yet I will have another video coming of uh, playing games on the Tesla in fact wirelessly with a wireless controller so be on the lookout for that and then we'll go back to well we'll take a look right so sky force um pretty straightforward um sh you know scrolling uh, top scrolling shooter um solitaire etc it's funny there was some things in the news about being able to play these while you were driving that is not necessarily the case in fact they've changed it i believe as well now you can't even trick it so we have some great classics in here <clears throat> some of the kids these days and probably some of the folks that happen to have uh, a Tesla may not even know what some of those games were or are or how to play them um, and then of course we've got some newer stuff uh, that can be interesting as well and then even I bet you there are some of you 
who uh, probably are in that middle group that actually maybe you don't know Sonic the Hedgehog either. Um, that was even from my childhood. So, all right, so let's go back. There's the arcade. We've got our web browser. It is a pretty full featured web browser. I think there's, you know, it could be definitely some limitations as far as the technologies are used, but rarely for the things that I have used it for, I haven't had much of an issue. I think it's only a real hindrance is that it's using an LTE connection from AT&T, so how quickly it loads up and actually loads a page is going to be different for everybody and your particular location. But as you can see, able to pull up Google News and um, browse through that. You can actually favorite as well and then um, see those favorites. So uh, Bluetooth. This was a, a, a more of a setting. Um, you can actually connect your phone or, or play the Bluetooth off of your current phone. So it's more of an audio thing rather, rather than actually taking a look at the settings for the phone. FM radio, very straightforward as well. Um, we can direct tune. We can actually take a look at other options there um, and tune into any of those. Karaoke is a uh, interesting feature if you are into singing and driving it will actually allow you to um, read the words I suppose while you're rocking out probably for your um, more for your passenger right for safety but um, I'm just playing with this the scroll wheel here and seeing uh, what happened to happen to do but um, you know you can select a song and it will play the song and then obviously throw up the words so you can <clears throat> or your passengers can sing along so kind of a, a neat feature uh, if you're into that um, streaming is sort of like if you don't have a subscription for Spotify or Tidal um, and TuneIn is more for podcasts um, so streaming if we take a look at that, it will actually just show you if you have happen to have um, an account for that. But I believe this is a, a free version of the service. If again, if you don't have Spotify, tune in again a little bit more for podcasts and that sort of thing. Uh, I guess they do happen to have some music, etc. But by and large, uh, I see this being used more for podcasts. And title is also a newer feature. I've been playing around with this. And Tidal is supposed to be a service that allows you to listen to high-res audio or even audio file quality music. And the sound system in this car is so amazing, I wanted to try it out. Maybe I need to spend a little bit more time with it, but while I'm not near a Wi-Fi, I'm not able to actually view any of the um, master, which is the highest quality uh, or even some of the hi-fi stuff. So I have uh, one track here that I believe I have found on Wi-Fi, and that actually um, that actually is the only hi-fi track I'm able to find. Regular searches for the service um, won't actually bring up things that I would assume they would have some master quality for. So you would assume that we'd have some master audio for Michael Jackson content, um, but I do not see that here and those are designated actually with tags so it should be pretty clear but I'm guessing it's simply because I'm not near Wi-Fi while I'm searching and perhaps needs to pre-download some of those um, audio tracks to get the best quality so while we're here I'm um, taking a look at the music we've got obviously the artist content here for this particular service we can start to add it to our favorites um, if we're in Spotify it's also similar to adding adding things to our favorites um, we can add the whole album, we can actually, you know, tap a track, we can, you know, favorite that particular track, etc. We can shuffle, we can see our playing cue, if we do happen to have a cue, we can search, and you can actually use voice search as well, so you can actually type, you can tap the microphone icon, or you can again use the scroll wheel to toggle the toggle the voice control and search for an artist, a song, a playlist, etc. Very handy. It works pretty darn good. And any if you've experienced searching for music, 
of course you're going to find those artists that it just doesn't happen to like. That's definitely my case, listening to a lot of Scandinavian folk metal. So another uh, settings menu here, we can adjust the tone, we can manually set these. Um, equalizer, which is pretty nice. We can also have this immersive sound. I have it set to auto. I typically have had it on high, but I'm wanting to see if there's any difference. The immersive audio, I think, just takes more advantage of all the speakers in the car, and I believe there are like 15 of them. Um, and I, I can I mean, I kid you not, this really is, I, I will come and sit in my car to listen to some tracks that I really enjoy, because it is that good. And the seal quality of the car is fantastic. There are no rattles, even with huge bass it's not that trunk rattling you used to get a new feature is the subwoofer volume which is pretty awesome i really enjoy being able to specifically adjust that that is brand new in this update as well we can adjust the balance uh, another neat feature so if kids are sleeping or something or a uh, wife is sleeping you know you can adjust that as well generally leave it in the center or again a little bias up front if I happen to be uh, listening to something on a road trip and you know the kids aren't exactly interested in it so a really cool way to interact there and then here under options we have DJ commentary I haven't messed with messed with that um, don't care for it I don't use the actual streaming service itself um, instead I use um, Spotify as my main but we can toggle explicit content and allow mobile control okay so i believe that takes care of all of the options here in the apps drawer this again is a long video but it is meant to be right so i wanted to do an in-depth video as in my first one to really give everybody who may not have their car or waiting for a car a good idea use the chapters if you're wanting to jump around to a different section highly encourage that uh, as well or if you want to go back and review something okay another quick tip uh, you can actually tap on Spotify to kind of change the size of it or completely hide it which is really uh, a nice feature um, and you can also do the same by tapping on the artist as well so it's kind of that window so this is probably the easiest but certainly an option for you should you want to toggle it off all right now let's dive into the main settings. The quick controls, this is a brand new menu as well. Some things have been changed as far as their touch targets, really large touch targets, which is really nice. We've also relegated our um, signal for LTE in here as well. And some of these like status icons that just don't really do anything for you when they used to be up here. So I think cleaning that up and relegating it into this quick controls menu is really nice. The Profile one is probably the most interesting um, and, and something that I, I think is okay there. Uh, again, it used to be up in the top and I have some issues with it not recognizing me or recognizing my wife when they walk in, when they get in the car with their phone or my phone and adjust to my wife's and I get scrunched against the wheel. Anyway, it's a couple of taps to get up here and change that, um, but uh, you can see the different um, options here including valet mode should you wish to have a valet park your car it limits things so that nobody can joyride in your car which is quite nice okay so we got our lighting here pretty straightforward we have uh, folding our mirrors you may not be able to see that we can actually save our location which is really nice so if you always want them to fold at this location um, once you're parked uh, or get to that location that will do that automatically I do that for before I get into my garage which is really nice child locks toggle window lock toggle glove box so again the only way to access the glove box is either in this menu here or if you use a voice command wipers off set you know speed and then auto by default it's an auto mirror adjustment these are done with the, the wheels which is um, pretty cool actually it makes it really easy to adjust the mirrors I really like that and then of course we can toggle um, whether they auto tilt when you're in reverse auto fold when you're parked or auto dim with cars with bright lights behind you um, really nice feature as well a steering wheel is the same thing you're still going to use this roll wheel on the steering wheel in order to adjust those and then once you make that adjustment you can save uh, it to your profile 
here we can toggle on and off sentry mode that's all that is so if we are parked somewhere um, by default if you leave it on it will you know toggle it in those specific locations we'll be able to uh, adjust that i think in another menu here and then recording um, that actually saves a recording as you've done that the icon changes as well then we've got the screen brightness so we can toggle it to auto or adjust it manually oops as well so i typically like it on the full brightest and auto um, i've got my home link up here as well any service alerts and then our bluetooth connection so pretty straightforward home link toggles there another nice nice feature if you have the home link is once you get near your home a nice large panel appears actually right here that allows me to toggle in a nice big tap target if it didn't auto trigger which sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't most of the time it does but uh, allows me to, to trigger that really quick or if i want to open the other side of the garage door that's there as well so really handy for doing that i don't have any service alerts uh, with the exception of some of the the uh, regenerative braking cold weather etc which is a normal behavior i have found out pedals and steering so this one is kind of like a set it and forget it for me i rarely am in here um, i i always drive in sport that's just the way i do some people like the acceleration or like the lack of acceleration if you will and chill um, i've heard it's better for tires but you know I leave it in sport that's me i do actually leave the steering mode in standard sport is a little bit tighter uh standard is kind of uh in between obviously comfort and sport so standard is fine for me stopping mode this is actually um how what happens when you actually get to a light or a stop sign and you stop once you release the brake what's going to happen and by default or I believe the default is hold. So it will actually just hold your place and you won't have to do anything, which is really nice for one pedal driving. Get to the stop sign, you're at a full stop and it will hold you in your spot. Lifting off the brake, you know, you can toggle this to roll or creep, which I have actually never used any of those. So I leave it on hold and I enjoy that. Off-road assist, uh, you can toggle this. I've never used as well. Just traction control to optimize performance for off-road autopilot features etc available um, etc so have not to use that don't plan on off-roading in my model y performance but there you go slip start could be nice if i happen to get in a icy snowy spot and as if you can see outside it is that here um, but so far i have had zero issues with driving in the snow um, i do have the um, Tesla Gemini snow tires on my car, which have been pretty fantastic. And if you have a tow hitch, you've got trailer mode for towing. So that's what you'll find in pedals and steering. Next, let's jump to charging. Charging is basically we're going to come to you, set your percentage. I have mine set to 70, uh, 78%. I think it's pretty, you know pretty inaccurate with with this but i usually set to about 80 percent for my daily right so um it has that recommended range there for your daily driving i have mine set to 70 and i think that seems to be fine obviously if you plan on going to trip you'll move that up um, we can open the charge port we can unlock the charge port so if we are plugged in and we need to unlock the charger cord from the car that's where you can do that if it doesn't happen to do it automatically or if it doesn't have a uh, a button etc that can be handy if you're using a third party um, system and not a tesla system um, you can adjust the amperage uh, of the particular charger i've never messed with that i wouldn't necessarily mess with it and i believe it is also set by default based on the availability of the amperage from the system you are charging on so i don't really see much of a reason to change that but hey there it is you can also schedule charging which is interesting too so if you know again you're going to go on a trip you set that sucker to 100 percent you want to have that ready by 8 a.m so you guys can take off with a full battery uh, you can set that up and it will be ready for you so there isn't any drain by the time you are ready to go it can also help with um, charging on off peak hours which may improve the speed of your charging at your location 
any supercharging trips uh, will be here as well and how much you have paid for them. Autopilot, this is gonna look a little bit different for everybody. I do have the full self-driving system and again, I am in the full self-driving beta as well. So I've got a few other options in here, but auto steer, navigate on autopilot uh, are kind of the two main toggles. Um, I believe everybody is going to have auto steer and everybody is going to have navigate on autopilot, but it will have some of those things that are, are features that are not uh, available, um, such as lane changes and uh, exiting on ramps, etc. So you can kind of uh, decide on some of the settings there for autopilot. Again, I'm in the full self-driving beta. I can toggle that on and off. If you would like to try to get into the beta as well, you can toggle that on and then you'll be entered into the queue once your safety score is at, I believe now it's a 97 and up and it will be pushed to you eventually. There has not really been much communication as to how or when that happens. So um, good luck, <laughs> it's been interesting. Uh, and certainly was for me. Um, full self-driving profile, again, for FSD beta folks, um, you can change the behavior as there. Traffic light and stop sign control is one of the features that is available if you have an FSD computer, you have subscribed to the full self-driving, um, will actually stop and chime and or go. Full self-driving visualization preview, which gives you the visualization of the cars and um, pedestrians and even dogs on the screen, which is pretty interesting. Trash cans. Uh, summon beta is another FSD. Um, if you have purchased that FSD computer, uh, an option to summon the car and you can customize the distance for that. So being able to, again, from your phone, drive wirelessly or without the driver, actually bring your car to you, summon it from your garage, um, etc. I have not had much luck with the summon to my location, um, but backing it out and that sort of thing has been pretty um, pretty handy. Uh, standby mode essentially allows the car to kind of maintain some of the, the features and also makes it quicker to access summon as well. So that's kind of the one reason you would leave this on. So if you happen to use um, uh, summon a lot to get your vehicle out, you may want to turn that on. Speed limit, so when you are engaging the traffic aware cruise control or autopilot, what speed will it will use? Will it use the current speed limit of your current location or will you use the speed that you are currently driving? I'm used to the current speed that I'm driving um, from regular cruise control, so that's what I'm comfortable with. That makes it nice. And then you can actually change the offset as well. If you happen to use the speed limit option, you can up it by two miles an hour or a percentage. Automatic blind spot camera. This is an awesome new feature for the V11 update that a lot of people have been waiting for. Um, I don't think, let's try it. Yeah, so there we go. So even when I'm parked or working, you can see the, the repeater um, camera on the left-hand side with that camera will show up pretty. Um, nice feature now that you can see that and then also have a collision warning uh, sh should you be uh, in danger of perhaps making a lane change so some really great updates there and really handy speed limit warning it will you know whether you want to warn you or display or ding etc your speed limit you can automatically set this to uh, have an offset as well um, Etc. So uh, I usually I just leave it on the relative and keep it as is, right? So again, we're in the autopilot menu. Forward collision warning. I have it again late because I have felt it's pretty sensitive, uh, and um, but you know can be really nice to have that earliest warning possible should you decide to need it. Lane departure avoidance. Um, the warning will simply kind of vibrate your wheel, letting you know that you are leaving the road or you might be on that white line. Not that I would know that. Uh, or the assist, if it wants to actually provide the corrective steering for you. So those are some options as well. Uh, an emergency lane departure avoidance, emergency braking, obstacle aware acceleration, 
traffic aware cruise control chime so when you turn that on um, and then the green light chime so if you happen to roll up to a stop signal and once it turns green it will give you a ding hey it's time to go dummy so those are the options here in autopilot lots of great automatic safety features that all teslas get and makes driving a tesla even more safe the locks menu so here is where you're going to add keys or have all the keys available to you the keys are those cards that you're given looks like a black credit card with the tesla logo on it um Maybe I'll bring mine out here real quick and show everybody. Or, of course, you can use what I mostly use is my phone. That is the uh, amazing portion of having, one of the amazing portions of having a Tesla. But should you need a backup, then you have your Tesla card. So, which this is the key, tap it on that, um, the side pillar of the car, and that will lock and unlock, and then, of course, allow you to drive. That's also what you would give a valet or someone who is going to be guest driving your Tesla. So you can have um, more phone keys, and then if you happen to have additional regular keys, those are there as well. Okay, so we have our keys, we have our window locks, child lock here, so we saw that in the quick controls as well. Walk away door lock, which is really nice. You simply park and get out of the car, walk away, and uh, that's actually something that I have gotten, had to get used to in my Honda. I will often forget to turn off the car engine when I get out. I'm so used to just like parking and getting out and walking away from my car. Um, so that's kind of an interesting behavior that I have adopted driving a Tesla. Uh, driver unlock, door unlock mode. This is another new feature. Don't really care for it myself, but uh, having the only unlock the driver door when first unlocking the vehicle um, a safety thing could be really great um, if you are in an area where that could be handy. And then unlock on park. Um, again, you put into park, all doors open, people can get out. Car left door open notifications. So whether it's off your doors or doors and windows, it'll actually send you a notification to your phone and let you know that one of those things has been um, either left open or windows down that's also very handy and then you can exclude your home so for some reason if you want to leave those doors open or etc you can actually exclude the area pretty neat uh, same thing with the walk away door lock you can also exclude your exclude your home should you wish to just leave your vehicle open at home all the time and close windows unlock that's actually a really nice feature as well kids leave the windows down uh, forget to roll them up as soon as you walk away uh, it will actually close all the windows once the doors are locked Lights, pretty straightforward. We have auto beams, parking and on and off. Um, parking lights can be pretty handy uh, because when you roll up to a spot and you put it in park, it actually doesn't turn off your headlights. So if you're like waiting in a drive-in or you're waiting to go get some takeout food, etc., turning on the parking lights can be uh, really nice as you're waiting for perhaps somebody to come out to your car. Fog lights, on and off, etc., dome lights, off i'm gonna set that to auto not entirely sure why they're set to uh, off but there it is ambient lights we'll turn that on as well that's the steering um the floor well lights etc and then you can have the auto high beams toggle that on and off and then also when you put in autopilot it gives you an option to toggle those as well um it is a bit finicky in my experience but there it is headlights after exit so if you want those to stay on after you exit the car um, that could be handy as well should you need to kind of get that extra light as you're leaving in the dark and then the steering wheel lights okay so that is the lighting let's move over to display we now have the ability to change between light and dark mode so dark mode um, obviously best at night uh, and I have the auto on which works pretty darn well I really enjoy that screen clean mode so if you need to wipe down your screen lots of fingerprints and you haven't gotten a screen protector like the one i have on my car which is a nice mat does not do any reflection and the fingerprints are almost zero link to that in the de in the description should you wish to buy one for your tesla probably one of my top recommended accessories so um, rarely do i have i actually I maybe have only used that once 
Touchscreen language, so some localization things here, very straightforward, lots of supported languages, uh, and that sort of thing. So very much um, you'll find your uh, locale uh, information here. Trips, this is another pretty handy section as well. This was also per previously relegated to this left-hand side of the screen and was not easy to find, but you can see um, current trips. You can reset the trip counters here and then um, see energy usage, etc. So actually a very handy and now a very easy way to get to it rather than having it hidden in a, uh, a toggle that was down on the bottom. Navigation options. I Since I'm rarely out of my small town, I don't need any sort of um, voice navigation, so I have that off, but you can change the volume for that. You can also use voice commands again to change that volume. You can have the automatic navigation, which will, um, in the morning, try to take you to work uh, or to home, depending on where you're at, and for your calendar events too. So that's actually pretty handy as well. You've got a meeting to go to. You've got an address loaded in that meeting. When you get in your car just before that meeting, it's going to try and navigate you to that. Pretty neat. Trip Planner is great for making sure that it will automatically route you to the superchargers along your route. You should probably never turn that off just to make sure and um, gives you a nice idea of where you need to go, how long you're going to be at your charger, etc. And then, of course, online routing. So your, your basic navigation items here. Um, and then you can toggle how much time you want to do any sort of rerouting. So um, should, it's going to save me 10 minutes to go this other route, then it will automatically do that for you as well. And then you can uh, obviously toggle what you would like to uh, avoid and or use. Safety menu. We're almost done, folks. We're almost done. Safety menu uh, allow mobile access. So that, again, allows us to um, view the 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 sentry mode from our phone also allows us to use uh, the settings from the phone etc so if we want to roll down the window so anything that is in the phone app I believe that is what that is mostly for and allows you to um, access the car from your app which is highly recommended power off feature I've only used this a couple of times in order to um, try and trigger a reset or something or allow the car to fully rest I had some issues with my car, and uh, sometimes if a, it doesn't enter sleep automatically, that powering fully off uh, can be handy. Uh, speed limit mode. So again, you're going to you can have this set up, I believe, to a profile or um, just in general, but you can limit the speed of the car. Sentry mode. So here are those safety options I was talking about, specifically with sentry mode. Um, by default, you, uh, you want to leave that on, um, and you can exclude certain areas. So at home, for me, it was triggering a lot at night and eating up a bunch of the storage, so I decided to exclude my home. Um, I wish there was a way to not do that because, man, it would be nice if somebody happened to gain access to my garage to be able to see that, but um, there are other solutions for that obviously at home so you can make some exclusions there which is pretty nice and then including this kind of more broad exclude favorites so you can actually use the favorites in your map navigation and set that to exclude um, those certain spots as well so perhaps if there's several spots where you don't care to have sentry mode on which would be odd but hey there it is view live camera view via mobile app but this is also another newer feature not the holly update it came before that uh, but now you can actually access the cameras from your mobile phone uh, which is pretty dang awesome and in fact you can even use the uh, you can actually use the um, car speaker if you have a newer model that has the um, external speaker to talk to somebody which is pretty fun which actually that reminds me there is a uh, uh, some of the toy box features we have not looked at yet so we'll take a look at the toy box uh, I guess last dash cam uh, auto uh, manual or on honk so on honk can actually be handy too so you know when you are raging at a driver um, you hit the honk button it'll actually save whatever happened to happen there so that's an easy way to make sure that that happens and saves that footage for you can delete all the dash cam clips you can format the USB drive if you put a new one or you just need to erase everything quickly um, 
Park Assist Chimes. Joe mode is uh, basically make sure that the has the back seat volume down, especially for things like navigation, etc. So again, if you've got kids, they don't necessarily need to hear that sort of thing. So that could be pretty handy. I'm not entirely sure why it's called Joe mode, but hey, you know, that's that's for Joe. I actually like it. I use it. I've got kids, etc. Pen to drive can be handy um, if you've got kids or something. <laughs> I don't know, um, but hey, there it is. Glove box pin that can also be handy as well if you want to make sure things are locked in there and are not accessible. You can set up a pin for that particular um, glove box and then. Oh, it doesn't want you to use that. So we'll do two, three, two, three. One, two, three, four. It probably doesn't like that. Anyway, so there's that. Maybe that's uh, maybe my old pin. Probably. Um, service. So here under the service menu, we're going to see um, tire pressure. So once you're moving, it will actually show you this, um, which is pretty nice owner's manual which previously has made my my car crash i'll actually check that out here in a minute car wash mode it will um make sure all your windows are rolled up it will put the car in neutral uh and amongst other things we actually close all windows locks the charge port which actually is nice because if you're even hand washing the car touching the charge there the the port will actually open it up which is kind of irritating disables the wipers uh at sentry mode etc so um, for automatic car watches on conveyor belts, the free roll option shifts into neutral and prevents the car from braking automatically uh, if you leave. And then the car wash mode will exit if the vehicle speed exceeds 10 miles an hour. So that's pretty interesting. And we can actually change those options uh, as well. No, I guess not. I thought those were toggles, but I guess not. Um, but you can enable the free roll so for those automatic which i unless you've got a touchless one i wouldn't recommend um but that is car wash mode okay so we were in the service menu towing i actually forgot to do this once i was towed once uh and uh your tow truck driver is not going to remember to do it highly recommend i believe it disables um, your dash cam footage, etc. It will disable the alarm, which that was what happened to me. My alarm went off during the tow. It was not fun. Um, notifications, steering and seat calibration, factory reset. So a lot of like adjustments and stuff here. The only thing I've ever really used, I should have used the towing. I have used car wash mode. Um, notifications, I believe it's just, yeah, it's the same thing as the bell up in the left there. So nothing special there. Seat and steering calibration. I haven't actually messed with this and might actually be new. Um, but I believe this actually just allows you to maybe set the maxes of those, right? So the, the full range of motion, which should be fine, right? Unless you're having issues. I have used the wheel configuration, which because I have my 19 inch Gemini's snow tires on, those are on here. Factory or Tesla did that for me. So in the summer, I'm gonna go back to my Uber turbines. I miss them terribly. Um, but hey, the snow tires are working fantastic. Um, I also have heard that can cause like a reset as well and can fix some strange things with the car. I've just seen that anecdotally. I have not found that to be um, a reliable method of fixing high strangeness and of course the factory reset if you just want to wipe everything software is where you're going to basically find all the details of your car your vin number your mileage um, what you've paid for what you still need to pay for your premium connectivity what software you're running you can jump to the release notes here for that which jumps you basically into the navigation uh, your navigation data which is woefully out of date when the last time was your car checked for software and then whether you are in the standard or advanced update preferences. I am in advanced and I guess that works, although, you know, I wish it could be faster, especially during the holiday rollout. I, I felt like I was 
behind everybody else. So that was kind of that was kind of rough, but it is what it is. And I have found that you can actually pull up the software, uh, pull up the this, and actually we'll do a manual check to see if your car is up to date, whether it's faster. Um, I, I you know maybe five or ten minutes if you happen to capture the window. I don't know how often it checks, but you do need to be near Wi-Fi for it to uh, to check. Or actually, it did check, but it won't download it until you're on Wi-Fi. Or install it. One of those. It won't complete unless you're on Wi-Fi. And then data sharing, if you want to share your data with Tesla. Um, telemetry, etc., which can help them improve the car. Of course, I'm sharing mine to make sure they get all that available. And then upgrades. So I think the only thing I would have in here is, yeah, premium connectivity. So I have still until June. Uh, you get a free year with service. So after that, unfortunately, it'll be $10 a month to be able to listen to Spotify, get traffic, um, satellite, and uh, video streaming, etc. So some of it is kind of lame, but hey. And then I also have heard as of yesterday that, um, or at least Elon on Twitter agreed that uh, a annual purchase for premium connectivity, hopefully at a discount, would be available. So that is the full car menu. Um, a lot of stuff in there. Most of it, again, you won't touch on a regular basis. Um, but before we leave, let's check out the toy box. This is, you know, definitely one of the frivolous parts of owning a Tesla, which is also one of the surprise and delight things that I love about owning a Tesla as well that you just won't find on any other cars, right? So the newest one is this light show. Um, pretty awesome. You can definitely check out other videos. I think it's the same for all vehicles, except if I think if you're in the Model X, etc., you know, it's going to have those gold wing doors that get into it. Very cool. And also, a, you can program a light show, even if you don't own a Tesla, and then have those available for people to load up to their USB drive, stick it into the car, and then load up a custom light show. So that's pretty cool. I may even try that myself. I think that sounds a lot of fun. The light show that's set up with Tesla, uh, with this one, is the holiday one. Very cool. Uh, everybody I've shown to loves it. And I love it too. Boombox. This is pretty cool as well. So there is an external speaker for the car. And it's not a great speaker. Um, but hey, it is a speaker. And you can play current media on that. You can change the horn. You can change the driving sound. You can change the summon sound. And there's several options there. And then also new is this megaphone option. So it uses the in-cabin mic. And I can say something outside won't won't test it here there's nobody around but i don't think you'd get anything from being inside here maybe we'll test it in another video uh, but pretty cool um, and again we can place the horn sound and then we've got uh, several different options here you can also load a um, a sound from your usb as well it has to be named a certain file it has to be named a certain file and in a specific folder, etc., but that can be done as well. I believe the same thing with um, the driving sound, etc. So um, you can have some fun with these. I again, I don't really have any use for them, um, but hey, if you want to just kind of show off some of the cool things, that's something they can. The megaphone is pretty cool. I definitely uh, enjoy that. And then we've got our emissions testing mode. Um, we can have the car gas outside so the whoopee cushion is outside we can actually make it do that or if we're inside we can move the whoopee cushion inside there we go which can be pretty funny if you don't you know, have a passenger um and then you can be a little bit more sneaky with it by having this fart on demand using the left scroll wheel only problem with that is it also interferes with your music but uh hey small price to pay for some entertaining laughs and then of course you can do it outside as well um again i'm not going to do that outside but that is a pretty entertaining as well and then you have of course your different types of emissions so there it is infamous uh emissions mode 
Tracks, uh, pretty interesting. If you are familiar with doing loops and programming, etc., you can actually set one of those up here and save it. I think you can actually send it to, uh, you can download it. And then in uh, romance mode, turns on the heat, gives you a Yule log, um, and hey, you know, if it was a nice day like this, hey, it's fine. Maybe you're in camp mode and turn that on. That's pretty cool too. You can do that. Sketchpad, MS Paint, or Tesla Paint, maybe. Uh, and the interesting thing is, once you uh, finish your sketch, you can send it to Tesla. Not entirely sure what they do with that. I, uh, maybe there is an online gallery you can look at. I think that might be a thing. Um, but hey, that's pretty interesting. The Mars view. Uh, if you want to change the look of your map, you can actually turn that on and then if we toggle this down now we are on the surface of Mars and we are a Mars rover so space X connection right um, so you know another kind of interesting fun thing Santa mode uh, this is uh, also one of those things that um, is is fun you can I actually use this the uh, voice toggle is saying ho 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 and it will automatically play um, a song, and when, once uh, it will play it outside on the external speaker, and then when you use your turn signals, it will actually make a, a jingle sound as well. So again, that's been kind of fun this holiday season, um, just kind of rolling around with that on as well. And then we have Rainbow Road. So press the gear stock down four times quickly when auto steer is engaged, and then you've got Mario Kart. Um, and it's uh, and it plays uh, Don't Fear the Reaper, I believe, and of course you get the the cowbell. So nice homage there to uh, Saturday Night Live skit. Uh, I dig it, and it's fun. My kids enjoy it as well. So that is our UI screen tour. We've already hit the browser, and I believe that will do it for this particular video. Thank you, everybody, for sticking around. Again, if you have found this video enjoyable, you enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Tell your friends about it, etc. Again, thank you so much for all my current subscribers. And uh, did, you, did I miss something? Was there something that you wanted to know more about? Can I answer some questions for you? Definitely hit me up in the comments. I will reply, respond, and give you information. And um, maybe even if needed, I can send you a quick video of that. So, um, again, thanks everybody for uh, watching, and we'll catch you in the next video. Peace.